but it's about being able to experience anything on the side of sex that you like, whether it's with one person monogamously or with just more than one person. Hi, I'm Steve, licensed mental health counselor. This is Quick Therapy, and I'm here with Rachel. Hello, yes, I am a cammer, and I also, on my personal life side, am also in the lifestyle of swinging and open relationships and all of that. So tell me a little bit more about that. What all the good things, all the maybe difficult things of managing that kind of lifestyle? Yeah, it's definitely, um, there are a lot of different facets of it. So everyone's relationship in it is a little bit different. And it's a lot about your partner and communicating and making sure that you want to try things and you're open and you're honest with yourself as well as your partner. But my personal relationship is, it's open on my side only but it's in the swinging kind of lifestyle. Can you explain a little bit more about swinging lifestyle? To be honest, not really sure where to start because I've been doing it and involved in it for about five years now, but it's something that everyone's relationship is so different mm -hmm. that I, it's hard to speak on it as a whole because mm -hmm. it's all very personalized. But it's basically people that are in open relationships for lack of better word because everything is a little bit different in what people call open whether it's lifestyle parties which would maybe be house parties or different clubs that allow people to have there's like back rooms where you can have sex with people or i mean there's so many different varieties there are events like private events public events that you can buy tickets to and all of these things a lot of people organize them or a lot of people just attend them but it's about being able to experience anything on the side of sex that you like whether it's with one person monogamously or with just more than one person fantastic all of the varieties <laughs> good stuff now for you and your partners how has it been you know figuring out the rules and expectations of the lifestyle yeah it takes a lot of talking because mm -hmm. you have to one you have to figure out what in it you would like mm -hmm. and that was a big hurdle for me is to even consider because all of my previous relationships were monogamous mm -hmm. and that topic never even came up but the person that I'm seeing now, he has been in the lifestyle his entire life, basically. Mm -hmm. So he had a lot of information that I could just ask him questions and he could provide to me. And then I could do research on my own to see what other people have done, see what I think is interesting to try, try some things, don't like some things, express that, change our dynamic a little bit. So it's a lot of talking. <laughs> talking yes. and awareness. Yes. What do I want first? Yes. It's like, okay. It may be, it's okay to have a maybe. It's an okay to yes. be like, I'm questioning what I want, but slowly figuring it out and being like, okay, this is, I know, now know what I want, being able to communicate that. And definitely recognizing the things that I definitely don't want. That's And being yes. able to communicate that way beforehand as well. That's also very helpful to set the boundaries that I know are things that I don't want to do. That gives me more time to like, experience and explore the, the maybes. Fantastic. Boundaries, being able to say <laughs> yes. no. Consent, yes. all that stuff, good. Very important, yes. <laughs> very, very important, yes. And it shouldn't be something that's hard to bring up either. Uh, no, no, it shouldn't be. Sometimes it's awkward. Right. Sometimes talking about sex can can be very awkward yes. or you're afraid of getting your heart hurt. Like, what if I share yes. something I want and the other person says no? Yeah. We the anxiety do that. leading up to asking about stuff can be almost overwhelming, but once mm -hmm. you get over that hurdle, you realize that if you can openly communicate and no one's getting heated, no one's gonna have hurt feelings, you're just talking about what you might wanna do, mm -hmm. then it's it's a lot easier. Fantastic. And it sounds like from that end, you and your partners have a very good trust with each other. Yes, lots of trust. And especially in certain scenarios, I know that I've talked with people that if they're gonna go experience other people, for example, mm -hmm. they must talk about it beforehand. Good. Whereas some people, in like in my case, I can go experience someone else and then have the story to come back with afterwards. And that okay. is something that we also enjoy, but it's really dependent on your partner and what they, mm -hmm. like if they would be uncomfortable with you going and doing something without them knowing, make sure you tell them beforehand. I, on the other hand, have the fun of like experiencing it by myself and then coming back with a fun story. Fantastic. So clear communication, awareness, trust, yes. expectations and boundaries. Yes. Love it. And being honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people will try to think of what they think their partner wants or would enjoy and they go with that to yeah, be giving. No. But you have to also be honest with what you would actually want. Yeah, no mind reading? No. Can't no one's do a it. mind reader. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't do it for the other person. Right, right. I, I want to yell at some of my clients so much because they will set themselves on fire to keep other people warm. Yep. It's like, no. 
that's why every other relationship I've ever been in has been monogamous because mm -hmm. I know that that's not something that they would want to do and it's not something that they would even approach being able to fathom doing. So it's not something I ever brought up. What advice would you have for someone who is interested in maybe trying out an open relationship or swinging with a partner? Ooh, that is hard. I think the first thing is really think about if it's something that you would enjoy because sometimes people will even just think of it as a, oh, we're getting a little slow in the bedroom, like let's spice it up. I don't think that that's really the best avenue to go. It's more of if it's something that you already would be interested in, not something to like revitalize mm -hmm. or like add something just because you need something. It should be something that you've always kind of considered or wanted or like even enjoyed the thought of. It is not a Band-Aid. No, not a Band-Aid at all. Mm -hmm. The quickest way I've found for people to end things is to try to use that to save things. Yeah, no. Because it's an extreme for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Rachel, thank you so much for joining me and having this conversation with of me. This course. has been great. Yeah, this has been a really fun time. Thanks for having me on. Thank you.